Oops. A few hundred thousand of you have already seen my initial impression and review of the Springfield Echelon, along with the 10,000 other YouTubers and influencers that Springfield sent this goddamn gun out to. It's become the Springfield Kardashian in that it's annoyingly everywhere and there are videos of dudes manhandling it all over the internet. My initial impressions. Very good, as were everyone else's. It seems like everybody liked the gun as far as I can gather, but it's really hard to kind of cut through the static of a full-on marketing blitz and really figure out if a gun is worth a shit or if it's all hype. To those ends, I reached out to Springfield and I asked if they'd be interested in a teensy little bet. If they would cover my transportation costs, I would take the Echelon to a Thunder Ranch three-day advanced pistol course I had already signed up for to see how it held up to three straight days of getting pounded by Papa Clint. I'm glad you weren't in charge of the Normandy invasion. Is that my new guy? Yep. Yeah, Southern California, get up here. The catch was that no matter what happened, I was gonna be able to make a video about it, good or bad. Oh yeah, one other catch. Springfield didn't even know that I was gonna do this, but I was going to beat this gun to shit. Whoops. while I was at it at the ranch. Springfield said no problem. They told me that they've got a copy with like 20,000 rounds through it that hasn't had an issue so far. So they weren't worried about the Echelon going to the ranch. They had no idea what I was gonna do to their gun. <laughs> right out of the gate, I wanna tell you that Springfield agreed. So that means they bought my plane ticket to Oregon, but I'm not gonna sell you guys out over a Southwest want to get away fair round trip. I mean, if I was, I wouldn't be here telling you about it. If you need to know more about the Echelon, watch my first impressions review. We go over all the specs in that one. I'm just going to give you a brief overview right now because I'm assuming you've watched that video. This is a striker fired polymer frame 9mm handgun that's going to use a serialized chassis like the Sig P320, meaning that you can swap the fire control unit from frame to frame to frame to frame without actually buying a new gun. At the outset, the Echelon is going to come with nine different frame configurations, small, medium, and large frames, all 17 plus one round, and each frame will have a small, medium, and large grip module. The trigger, extremely glocky, and it has two sears in order to ensure that this gun is not going to pop off if it's dropped. It also has an ingenious optics mounting system that will accept over 30 types of pistol optics at the time of filming. One of the most important details is that the Echelon is actually made by HS Product, the Croatian military manufacturer with a reputation for manufacturing reliable, durable, effective firearms that are used in theaters all throughout the world. Now let's get into the torture test. This one came with me to Lakeview, Oregon to the world famous Thunder Ranch for the notoriously brutal three-day advanced defensive pistol course. I made a separate video on my personal channel with my entire packing list and all the gear that I used in the class along with links to get the stuff. I'll link everything below too so you can pick up some gear for your class if you decide to take a pistol class at Thunder Ranch or anywhere else. Also, self-promoting plug, just shilling it out in this video. The week of December 10, we're going to host Thunder Ranch at my range, the Neutral Ground Gun Company, for three two-day pistol courses that are not only going to cover the Thunder Ranch doctrine and curriculum, but because I'm co-instructing and I'm a Louisiana State Police certified and NRA certified instructor, the course is going to satisfy the requirements for the Louisiana Concealed Handgun Permit training requirement or the training requirement for any state that requires an NRA basic pistol curriculum instruction. We're going to be working through the details as this video drops, but it's definitely going to be December 10 week, one class Monday, Tuesday, one class Wednesday, Thursday, one class Saturday, Sunday. I'm going to drop a form. You can RSVP at no cost, and we are working our way down the list whenever the classes actually go up for sale. 
by the time you sign up. So earlier the better. Remember we've already put 500 rounds through the echelon or more from the first review video and it's not been cleaned or lubricated at any point in the initial review. I thought it was only fair to drip a couple drops of oil on the barrel and the frame rails, but that's all we did before the pistol class started. This gun has still, as we sit here today, never been cleaned once. Before the class, I got lead instructor Jack Daniel and Clint Smith himself to get their hands on the echelon and give me their initial impressions of it. Why do I got to go first? Because <laughs> you just spent 20 years on the street. <laughs> so um, just, again, having not shot it yet, uh, I like the concept of the optics mounting system. I think that's pretty cool. take a lot of different kinds. Right? There are over yeah. 30 different optics. Okay. It's got this little gas pedal on the side kind of thing, and it's actually the takedown lever. That's kind of cool. The slide lock is, um, I don't really necessarily like it. It's kind of have to have a weird grip on it, but I don't dislike it at the same time. Uh, just before the camera turned on, we talked about the Ambi magazine release. Um, I don't like Ambi stuff on pistols, just as a right-handed shooter, I get it for a lefty. Mm -hmm. But I think Clint and I have the same sentiment that we don't want to accidentally bump it on this side, but it is raised here, so it's a little bit protected. Um, cause I don't want it coming out of the holster without a magazine in it yeah, sure. or the magazine going down range when I pull it out. Uh, the sights seem good. Trigger is, I mean, it's, it's a Glock ish Civil. trigger. Yeah. But it's not horrible. I back up everything that Jack said, not because we're just sitting here, but because it's the way I think about guns. If I'm carrying a gun concealed, I don't like the, the button. Uh, and people go, well, you could say the same thing for appendix carry. And, but, and I go like, that's, you can say that if you want, but I don't carry the gun appendix. I'm not blowing myself in the personals okay uh, so like if you want to point the gun at your dick go ahead i'm just not into it um polymer got it metal on top got it got iron sights and they're on there and you can see them through the tv screen because i'm not a big tv screen guy but i get it i'm old i'm archaic i got okay so would you want to make it bigger or smaller generally for me on a gun that i'm gonna pistol first of all i'm not carrying a micro anything yeah. no okay i'm not saving you're gonna have a hard time saving your life with a pistol anyways. Okay, so saving my life with a micro pistol? I don't think so. I can carry the biggest pistol I can carry and conceal. That said, I don't like all the buttons and bells and whistles to be large. For me, the grip, like holding onto the gun, feels really yeah. awesome, I got no problem. I've already tried the trigger, uh, got no problem with that either. And probably for most people, a little bit of sponge in the trigger is a good thing. Yeah. Cause like what you don't need is a hair trigger and a gun oh, yeah, you're gonna sure. fight with. For sure. Okay, I'm sorry. This to me, if someone goes like, what do you see? I see the contemporary handgun is what I see. Space shuttle going to Mars. Okay, polymer lower, light on it, TV screen on it. And I agree with the things that would be important to me, which is iron sights, okay? And I stand with Jack on the Ambi thing. But like I said, uh, they've made an effort, like you said, having a raised here. Mm -hmm. So someone thought of that. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So that means they put enough thought in it that they figured out that, okay, that could be an issue. Yep. Mm -hmm. So someone thought of that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah, and the, one of the big things is being able to use your iron sights through right. the dot. And correct me if I'm wrong, but there's no need for a plate. No need for a plate. There and that's that's a huge optical. that's yeah, a yeah. huge deal because a plate is a, another point of failure for sure. And oh, you, have you seen plates fail? Oh at the yeah, range of dude, yeah. Like uh, we'll 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 do that yeah. video later. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can you can always tell um, if the if the plate fails or it's improperly installed or the screws shear mm. off so due to one of those operator, factors. Yeah. yeah. So this has happened more than well, once. Yeah. So oh yeah. Jerry Mickelix, his uh, no uh, Robbie Latham, yeah. his uh, his, his yeah. scope fell off. Yeah. Uh, Jess, hers demounted. Oh yeah, you right get him. It looked like a pirate, like yeah, you, like you, a <laughs> knot on their head. And it's like awesome. so that that's kind of a bigger deal than maybe I, I initially thought. Well, it when, uh, again, in, in goes, our experience, it yes. is again yeah. when you start hammering a gun, it's not just carrying the gun and it's cool and it's comfortable. But if this thing dismounts, okay. I, I want to set a sights on it yep. somewhere because it's just creepy, creepy Clint. Day one starts with a short warm up session, working on your fundamentals, putting a few hundred rounds down range with Clint screaming at you in your face. Accuracy was better than I expected at typical training ranges of five to 10 yards and beyond. And it seemed like every drill ended with one big blob of a hole in the middle of the target if you check that out. Day one wasn't without trouble though, and this is where an old issue reared its ugly head again. 
If you remember from the first impressions video, our extended magazine base plate blew off, causing brass bukkake all over the range floor. That's not what you want. Not at all. We found out that the base plate was improperly installed, and after we fixed it, we reversed the base plate, no more issues. Or so we thought. It happened again at Thunder Ranch. So, of course, super embarrassing. The guy wearing the fanny pack shooting the weird gun from Croatia in the shorts, has his magazine be its L all over the ground twice. A little cringy. Since this magazine had engaged its self-disassembly feature, it gave us the opportunity to get a closer look at its guts. It appeared to us that the dimple on that internal metal base plate that goes into the bottom of the magazine was backwards. In other words, it was dimpled up instead of down so it wasn't snapping into the hole in the plastic magazine extension. One of my favorite instructors at Thunder Ranch, Kurt, a renaissance man, tactical <laughs> Wilford Brimley, said he'd fix it. And pay attention here, because this is one of my most favorite TFB TV sequences of all time. At first, the idea was to try to punch in that dimple downwards in the other direction, but then Kurt said, maybe let's try to melt the plastic to fit it more tightly the extension around the mag body. Kurt put a lot of thought and effort into this. So since it's a piece of shit right now, we're gonna to hope to make it less of a piece of shit. So by applying fire to the plastic, we're gonna melt it, we're gonna take a flat bladed screwdriver and shove the base plate around the backside of the magazine to hopefully hold it in place, keep it from sliding off. We'll find out. We'll find out. Now wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there it is. Oh my God, I love it. I laugh so hard. How perfect is that? We ended up just covering the base plate with electrical tape. It smells like gin and Werther's. What are you doing, man? Uh, dude, it's just, it just <laughs> comes out that way. Uh, yeah. Turns out, worked perfectly. We had no other issues and we ran it really hard for two days after that. But I would be extremely wary if I were you of the extended magazines unless you got a lot of electrical tape. In fact, I wouldn't even use them right now because the gun collective had the same issue I did. Now we had zero issues with the standard flush fit mags. Day two, that's where you really start pushing the gun, higher round counts, unorthodox shooting positions, like from the ground and you know, the gun sideways and upside down, failure drills, bashing your gun against shit to charge it, one-handed firing, and it was during the second day that a lot of the shooters on the line had failures with their respective guns. Now, one area I wanted to test was how robust the optic mounting system is. One of the Echelon's big selling points is that it uses like a nearly universal no plate mounting system. I was a little skeptical. Plates introduce another point of failure. Jack Daniel told me they definitely see plates fall off during class. But what about Springfield's catch-all universal type system? Unsurprisingly, whether racking the optic off of the side of an object or even against the ground, which I did many times. The RMR stayed zeroed, the optics stayed fast. Ryan made a couple of witness marks on the screws before the class started, and neither of those witness marks had moved from the screws when the class was over, so the optic system checks out to me. Another day, another few hundred rounds through the echelon, not one malfunction. Actually, that's not true. We had several malfunctions, but those were caused by the frangible ammunition that I was using breaking around the case mouth. Now, this created some interesting training opportunities, we'll say, and I got to practice my malfunction drills a little bit more frequently than everyone else. I would say that this is needed practice because other than the ammo breaking off or deliberately causing malfunctions for purposes of malfunction drills, we had no mechanical problems for the first two days. That's over 1,000 rounds total through the echelon so far without a single gun-related malfunction. I was surprised and even a little frustrated that we hadn't managed to make this gun fail yet. So after class, myself, Ryan, some of the Thunder Ranch instructors decide to run some after-school care. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna dump sand in it. Oh, smack it down hard first. Yeah. With it open? Yeah. Oh God, really? Smack it hard. 
So we grabbed the Echelon, we grabbed another half case of ammo, and we went back to the upper deck range after class. Then we took turns continuously loading mags and firing the pistol, then throwing it in the dirt with the action closed, then throwing it in the dirt again with the action open, then slamming it in the dirt and the gravel, and then finally giving it the Buffalo Bill treatment. I mean, what else are you gonna do if it doesn't put the lotion on its skin, right? Gotta be some consequences. Not one single malfunction the whole time. At this point, with a total round count of about 1,500, including four range sessions, two before I got to Thunder Ranch and two days at Thunder Ranch so far, the Echelon starting to look like it might be for real after this little torture test, but we weren't done yet. Day three was Terminator Day. That's using Clint's shoot house. Each student gets to run through the Terminator one at a time and practice some CQB house clearing stuff. So we set up a plate rack outside the Terminator to let all the other students try the echelon out while they waited for their turn in the shoot house. Myself, Ryan Kurt, YouTube sensation Johnny B. Honest opinion. I love that long grip for my larger hands. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the trigger, trigger is above average, mm -hmm. and I love just looking at it right now, and I literally don't know anything that it's already ready for the red dot. That's fantastic. It'll so. accept 31 different optics right now without plates, okay. so it's got like a weird universal kind of mounting system. Ate up enough of it where it wasn't snappy. Um, I can't believe I'm going to say this. One mag review, I like it. Okay. Okay. We ran another half case through the echelon before we turned it over to the class. And that's when we noticed another issue. The RMR, which I did not literally pee on the day before, had some kind of weird artifacts in the lens. At first, I thought it was like water in the lens or my pre-range mimosas kicking in or scratches. No, instead of one dot, we had like 10 dots and the optic was almost unusable. We cleaned the lens, didn't fix the problem. As it turns out, we noticed a very, very small amount of water behind the laser emitter which was causing the issue. As a huge Trigicon fan, big RMR guy here, I was crestfallen to see the RMR fail the James J. Reeves piss jug test. But even with a blob of a reticle, Ryan and I were still clearing two plate racks with 12 plates in under seven seconds. The Echelon wasn't just proving to be reliable, but pretty shootable too. We let the 14 other students run as much ammo as they wanted through the Echelon, and we asked for their feedback. All right, nice. Yeah. Comfortable grip, yeah. easy to manipulate, all the controls are where you expect them. Ambi, it's a good thing. Ambi, Ambi uh, beats Glock, having to turn it around. I like the ledge. The uh, or the uh, magazine release is, it's too small. That's, you're the second person to say that. And it's, it's it doesn't stick out enough. Mm -hmm. So, That's what she said. But, nice. the, but the ledge is nice because I'm used to shooting that with mine. Um, I like the gun. Yeah, nice. Smooth. Yeah. It worked. Yeah. Probably shoots better than me. Not one person that shot it had a negative impression of the gun. The only complaints that we got were about, of course, the optic and about the magazine release being too small or too hard to reach. This could possibly be alleviated by using either the smaller frame or a smaller back strap. We were using the medium sized frame with the medium back strap. We actually had several women shooters run the echelon with the medium frame and back strap as well. They really liked it. A few students did also complain, like I said, about the waterlogged optic. So we eventually took it off after a few shooters. With 14 students running at least two magazines each through the gun on the racks, we were looking at another 500 to 1,000 rounds through the echelon in day three. This gun has not been cleaned ever. And the only time it's been lubricated was just a couple of drops before the class started. Right now, I would say we have probably 3,000 rounds through this gun, and we have not had one gun-related failure. That's pretty impressive, but I should still emphasize that this is a new gun. In other words, I ran 2,500 rounds through my P365 under similar circumstances. I was like, dude, this thing's good to go. I only had one or two failures, but that's when firing pins were snapping off for other SIG P365 owners. 3,000 rounds without a failure, it's promising, impressive even. But remember that Ernest Langdon has 70,000 rounds through his PX4. Chuck Taylor ran 100,000 rounds through a Glock 17. What I'm trying to say is that we've scratched the surface. The Echelon did beat my expectations, 
but it'll be some time before we can conclude, hey, this gun is proven. And that raises the question, is it a little late to the game? Glocks have been around since the 80s, the M&P series, been around for 25 years or so, and the new kids on the block, the SIG P320 and the VP9, have been around for less than a decade. Yeah, I get it. People are absolutely sick of more polymer frame striker-fired handguns, but there's got to be a reason they keep coming out, right? I mean, look at the new Walther PDP and even the Turkish Canic lineup. I never watched Titanic, I don't plan on watching Barbie, but an absolute shitload of people did. Just because you aren't pumped up about another polymer frame striker fired pistol doesn't mean that they're not gonna sell a boatload of units. There might be a niche for this ultra safe modular pistol to fill, and there's a lot to like here with the Echelon, but maybe that's just the free Southwest plane ticket talking. You guys tell me, sound off in the comments if you've gotten to shoot one of these already, and let me know what you think. As usual, all the ammo we used came from Ventura Munitions, the best ammo store in the world. We've been working with those guys for like seven years. Huge thanks to them. Thank you to everyone at Thunder Ranch. And if you're looking for an echelon, don't forget to check first at Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore. If you like our content, please consider supporting us on Subscribestar, Utreon, or Patreon. We are viewer supported, even if we get a plane ticket bought for us every now and then. But thank you most of all just for watching. Have a great week.